Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 8M. We're going to talk about using a statistical test. Not so much how to use it, but what sort of underlies it, what it really means. We'll talk about why we need statistical tests, and then what we can learn from this particular test called a chi-squared test. So consider a cross between two pure-breeding parents, one white and one blue, the F1 offspring are all blue. We cross them and we examine 20 F2 offspring and we see that 7 are white and 13 are blue. Question asks, what's the genetic basis? We say, we hypothesize that the parents, the original parents, were homozygous for big B and little b alleles, respectively, that big B specifies blue, little b white, and we predict that the F2 will be three quarters blue, one quarter white. That's what the hypothesis predicts. In our experimental results, though, that's not quite what we saw. That would be 50, we sample 20, that would be 15 blue and 5 white, but what we actually saw was 13 blue and 7 white. Instead of 0.25, we have a white frequency of 0.35. Is that good enough? Should we? Is our hypothesis right? Can we decide? Well, we're going to think this through in some detail. So our hypothesis predicts this value. Our experiment gave us this value. Let's think about what if our hypothesis was right and we'd done the experiment many times, each time sampling 20 offspring, how often would we have gotten any particular value? So if our, our parents really are have the genotype we predict, then some of the time when we do the cross, we should see 15 blue and 5 white. But sometimes, because we're only sampling 20, sometimes we might see 6 white or even seven white, as we did in our own experiment, or even eight white. And similarly, we might see only four white, or three white, or two white. Um, and if we did a large number of samples, we might see we could eventually draw a distribution, a probability distribution of the samples that we would expect to see from a population whose true mean was 0.25. Notice that our blue dot, our 0.35 dot, is well within this graph. Now, this is I've done this sort of qualitative, semi-qualitatively, but we can make it more rigorous by applying a statistical test called a chi-squared test. And I'm not going to teach you how to do a chi-squared test at all, but I'm going to teach you to think about what it's telling you. So I used the um, chi-squared test um, app on the website provided by the GraphPad software company. They make statistical software. And in their site, I said, well, my experiment gave 13 blue and 7 white, but my hypothesis predicted that there would be 15 blue and 5 white. And it said, well, for n equals 20, the probability is 0 0.03. Now, the obvious question to say is, well, probability of what? And the best explanation for that that I've seen is on the GraphPad software site. So the p-value answers this question. If your expectation is correct, what's the probability of observing this large a discrepancy between your observed and expected values? So in this case, we can change it. If the big B and little b alleles in the parents cause the phenotypes of the F2, we expected a quarter white. What's the probability of getting 7 white out of 20? The p-value tells us p equals 0 0.03. The site tells us a small p-value is evidence that your expectation was wrong, 
the data are not sampled from the distribution you expected. A large p-value says, yes, this probability is entirely consistent with this real distribution. What does small mean in this context? Well, statisticians have agreed on a meaning of small. The cutoff is p has to be less than 0 0.05 for you to say that your observed result is inconsistent with the expectation from your hypothesis. In our case, p equals 0 0.3, that's way bigger than 0 0.05, so there's no need for us to discard the big B, little b hypothesis. Now we'll come back in a few minutes to the question of whether we actually should consider another hypothesis or whether we should just do a better experiment. So, but first I want to unpack this um, statistical test a little more by considering what would happen if we used larger samples. So here's the results of our sample with a population size of 20. The expected value of our hypothesis is 0.25. Our observed value is 0.35. The probability theory says that for this expectation and this sample size, we expect a distribution of results for different experiments. So if we did the experiment 20 times, we would get many different values. And 30% of the time, our answer would lie within this range. So we say, OK, we shouldn't discard our hypothesis. But what if we'd done a larger experiment? Again, theory predicts this. We observe this. But now we had a sample size of 40. Now probability theory says that the distribution is going to be narrower. Given that the real mean is 0.25, now our observed result is getting a little closer to the edge. But the chi-square test still tells us, no, this is close enough. There's still a 14% chance of getting this result if the true value of the population is this. Well, what if we did a bigger study? What if we did 100? There's ours. Now, um, probability theory says, well, the distribution's going to be fairly narrow. And the chance of getting 0.35 as your result, if you'd used a sample size of 100, is quite small. P is now less than 0 0.05, and we should discard our hypothesis. At least, our hypothesis is not supported by the data, and we should discard it. Um, finally, if we had a sample size of 200, there's that, there's that, the distribution will now be quite narrow if the true mean is 0.25, and we should definitely discard our hypothesis that this sample came from a population with that mean. Now, I want to, I'm going to show these figures again, drawing something different. I want to think about now what we should do about this, this result. It could be that our hypothesis is wrong, but we can't tell because our sample size was just too small. Or it could be that our hypothesis was correct and our small sample size gave us a somewhat misleading number. So here's our result with sample size of 20. There's the distribution. It might be that when we repeat our experiment with a sample size of 40, we now find that our sample gives a different, or 40 sample, gives us a different value. Maybe it's closer to 0 0.25. And when we use a larger sample, maybe it's over here, or here, so that when we use a larger sample, our result gets closer to the population mean, so that it's always within the expected distribution for the sample size that we used. On the other hand, we could repeat our experiment with larger sample sizes. This time I'll use white dot. And we might find that with larger sample sizes, 
our results did not get closer to 0.25. Maybe they got closer to 0.4 or even 0.5. And at that point, we would definitely say we should discard our hypothesis and look for a new hypothesis. Because our data, now we have a larger sample size, our data are very inconsistent with our hypothesis. When you do an experiment with only a small sample size, you don't know whether your results fall into the category of we need to do bigger sample sizes to show that our result does not match our hypothesis, or if we do bigger sample sizes, we'll find that we our hypothesis was right after all. So we've considered distributions of sampling results. Um, large samples better represent the population properties, and so they give us a better power of testing whether our observed results are consistent with our hypothesized expected results under a particular hypothesis. And then we've considered whether we should discard our hypothesis or not, if the ex depending on the experiment results, or whether we should just do a bigger experiment. In the next lecture, we're going to consider sort of turning this strategy on our head and starting not with the hypothesis that we think is really cool, but instead starting with a null hypothesis, a very boring hypothesis, and the goal being to do an experiment that lets us clearly decide whether our data disagrees with our null hypothesis, thereby supporting a more interesting hypothesis. I hope to see you there.